That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Vigilante, the San Francisco treat. I don't know. Uh, it's the sophomore film, sophomore narrative feature, technically uh, directed by William Lustig, uh, following his uh, cult hit Maniac from 1980. Vigilante was released in 1982. Uh, it is now uh, being released on a 4K Ultra HD two disc limited edition set courtesy of Blue Underground released December 15, 2020. This film reminded me of Death Wish, which came out what year? 1974. And in fact, Death Wish 2 uh, came out in 1980, the same year. And the man from Maniac, that main actor, he has a role in this film. Joe Spinell, yes. He is the uh, uh, defense attorney. Oh, you're going to be upset because I just forgot the name of the star of this film. You, uh, Robert Forster. Robert Forster. Okay. This movie is about <laughs> a man named Eddie, played by Robert Forster. Who, you know, we actually have reviewed the first and last films of Robert Forster. I thought movie. you were going to say who we met. Uh, what are his first No, we used to walk films? by that restaurant you see. That That's right. We Marcos. have seen him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we reviewed Reflections in a Golden Eye with Marlon Brando and Elizabeth Taylor, which was released on Blu-ray recently, and um, The Wolf of Snow Hollow, which uh, came out a couple mm. months ago. That was his last film. That's him. Okay. <laughs> so, he plays a man named Eddie. It's uh, set in New York. Mm -hmm. We are introduced to Eddie with his co-worker, played by Fred Williamson. Nick. Mm -hmm. Nick. Fred Williamson actually opened the film. He's part of like a neighborhood watch type situation, mm -hmm. right? And we see him like roughing up some bad guys. Well, he is uh, giving a speech to the neighborhood. The vigilante is about vigilantism, <laughs> of course. Uh, vigilantism. Vi vigilantism. Uh, and he is he actually is addressing the camera as well uh and this film is you know playing upon the urban terror of the 1980s um and then it switches to robert forrester uh and then we also get a tangent of a, a woman is killed in the neighborhood and fred williamson and crew uh go and beat the man to a bloody pulp and leave him in an abandoned parking lot right but one day some gang members break into eddie's home because they want something? Well, there's a, a situation at a gas station where a gas station attendant is being assaulted by Willie Colon, Rico, the uh, head of the, the headhunter gang, as they they're come to be known, and Robert Forster's wife, played by uh, Rutania Alda, who you know for, as the maid from Mommy Dearest, That's right. stops the altercation, slaps him in the face, and they hunt her down. That's right. So they hunt her down. Mm -hmm. She's assaulted in her home, and her son, there, who looks like he's five or six, mm -hmm, is killed. With a shotgun. He is blown to smithereens, mm -hmm. which I thought, it, it's not funny, but it was funny. Um, so, cut to the trial of Rico, who has been um, charged. Well, it's, with, not, it's not a trial, the charges. Oh, it's just, yeah, like, a, I'm not sure how law works, but it's like before the trial to determine, like, what charges will be brought against him in the court. Right. So it's assault and then murder. Okay, so Rico's lawyer is played by the man from Maniac. Mm -hmm. Joe Spinell. And there's a scene in a bathroom where one of the gang members, whose name is... Prego. Prego. The one that shot the kid, played by Don Blakely. Pays off the lawyer, mm -hmm. which obviously the lawyer is being paid as a defense attorney, but it seems like maybe it's like paying him out to maybe pay the judge off because he says like you need to get Rico off. So when they go into court, <laughs> we as the audience are told by the prosecuting attorney that the judge is an asshole. She's the assistant DA, played by Carol Lindley. And clearly the judge is not here for any of it. Mm -hmm. And immediately the defense uh, asks to like approach the bench and says like, hey, can we cop a plea? Like we'll just do the assault charges, but drop murder. And the assistant DA is like, yeah, sure, drop murder. So... Well, it doesn't quite play out like that. She struggles a little she bit. She tries. Yeah. And then she says, okay, well, for assault, can we get 15 years? And the defense is like, no, two years. And the judge is like, two years it is with a suspended sentence. 
<laughs> so of course she's not happy with that. And when the judge says, okay, he's pleading guilty to assault, two year sentence, but it's suspended. Of course, Eddie, Robert Forrester's character flips out mm -hmm. because his son was killed and he yeah. knows these people did it. Mm -hmm. So he flips out in court and is found in contempt and sentenced to 30 days in jail. Mm -hmm. So now prison. we move a pr prison. So now we move on to what seems like a different storyline, which is Eddie in prison. Eddie, it, it's um, and what he's dealing in, with in prison has nothing to do with like this gang. No, it's a, it's kind of a fractured storyline, yeah. and I think it's meant to show how he is. Uh, changed by this experience irreparably uh, because yes. uh, his co-worker Nick played by Fred Williamson approaches him to be part of their uh, little vigilante group and he declines because he's supposed to be kind of the moral center of the film uh, and of course the first thing he does when he gets out is goes and finds Fred Williamson and crew playing squash or whatever outside <laughs> Because he, he walks through all those people playing and interrupts their games to you know, to take vengeance on these men yeah. um, so we, we cut back and forth between uh, Williamson trying to clean up the streets in the neighborhood, per se, and uh, Robert Forster basically elude being raped in prison. Yeah, so while he's in prison, there's one gentleman, a very big man, who seems like the leader of the prison. Yeah, he's intensely... Who has, a, who has an interesting backstory. Sandy Alexander, who apparently was the head of the New York chapter of Hell's Angels, or however... <laughs> refer to it uh, and apparently William Lustig didn't know this at the time uh, but was later after the film convicted of murder himself um, but Robert Forster has a guardian angel for whatever reason that's kind of unexplained uh, played by Woody Strode this old black man which is funny because the the prison time culminates with a shower scene mm -hmm. where we get to see lots of butts um, where the the murderous the hell's angel man comes in and basically tells the like correctional officer like you know get out of here everyone clears the shower the officer is still watching the whole time yeah kind of amused he um and that man proceeds to assault eddie mm -hmm. but like you said his savior this older black man comes in which i thought was funny because the the bad guy the batter guy is very big and muscular and, and this old younger. man comes and much younger and this old man comes in and like punches him but he punches him in slow motion it would be like me fighting <laughs> but he's successful in getting him off of eddie but woody strode is a very notable uh, actor that w was acting in uh, a lot of the italian spaghetti westerns and um, a genre that lustig was borrowing from uh, that inspired Vigilante. He also was an athlete prior to becoming an actor. Um, and he had a very famous scene in Spartacus uh, against Kirk Douglas, which, you know, was decades prior. But uh, so, he, you know, he comes with a certain reputation, I suppose. Same. To wrap this up, when Eddie leaves prison, he ultimately kills Rico, mm -hmm. the one who was on trial and got off. Mm -hmm. He kills Pre Pre Prego, Prego, um, and then he kills the judge. The end. And then yeah, that's the end. It's very, very much that. And in between there, you get Fred Williamson doing what he does. Who apparently, because from what I know of, I, I do like Fred Williamson. And from what I know, he always kind of had to do his own thing. Like he had he his little karate fighting. He does his little karate fighting. He brought his own. It was his own wardrobe. Um, you know, he always wears the same jeans with that damn like zip up bomber jacket. Yes, uh, you know, and his rules were always like he will. Uh, for whatever narrative purpose, always win the fight, um, always get the girl, never be killed. So, you know, it's very much that, but. I was entertained. There are several memorable scenes, mm -hmm. but the storyline's pretty basic and it is reminiscent of a lot of films from that era with similar plot lines. Sure, and I think this is considered to have an edge over Death Wish as being more violent um, because of the, uh, you know, the scene with uh, the, the child dying, but I don't know in Death Wish when Hope Lang gets raped and killed Charles Bronson's that's wife, it's that's mm, I would mm. say this film has the edge because Robert Forrester is Significantly more appealing than Charles Bronson. He is Bronson-esque though. He, he's like if you mash. He's a better actor He's a better actor. He's like if you mash Bronson with the Steve McQueen uh, very, very rugged very handsome likable and subtle Yeah 
Um, and I, I kind of like seeing him and Williamson on screen together. Uh, there had been a planned sequel, but uh, the company that owned the rights tanked and Lustig actually never saw any of the profits from this mm. film. Um, and then it took him a while to get his next project off the ground, which of course would be the Larry Cohen scripted Maniac Cop and then its sequel, Maniac Cop 2. Um, I don't know, I think there's a lot to like about it. It's nice seeing Ritania, um Alda, uh, she's kind of got a D. Wallace quality about her in this period. Um, there's a really great supporting cast. Richard Bright uh, plays part of the vigilante group, um, who's from The Godfather, of course, but uh, I always uh, think of the character he played named Murray in The Ref. Um, I don't know, it's the last film of Vincent Beck, who played the judge, uh, who was known for Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, which is a MST3K film, um, and Peter Savage, who plays Mr. T, and that's who the film is dedicated to. Um, Peter Savage is, Mr. T is the one that is kind of in charge of all the nefarious things that the gang has been up to. I think Willie Colon is interesting, um, a very a famous musical artist. Uh, he was, Lustig was contractually obligated to have five of his songs. Which one is he? he he's Rico. He's the oh, main leader. Right. Um, which, you know, don't aren't really fitting with the soundtrack, but he had to find a way to well, I'm concerned about back. this battery, but I do want to mention the memorable scenes that okay. stick out. Uh, the, Eddie's son being shot and killed. Mm -hmm. Like through a window. Yeah, that was shocking. It is shocking. Me. Yeah Well, and she's when she's running through the laundry in the back and Yep, she stabbed in her titty meat um, uh, Rico's wife gets shot like in the bathroom. I don't know that she's his wife, but oh. yeah his uh, gen uh, female friend she this woman is shot and like the like the gunshot uh, the impact like flies her into like the shower mm -hmm. <laughs> like rips down the curtain that was pretty shocking um when eddie kills uh prego he like throws him off of a bridge mm -hmm. and when he hits the ground <laughs> First of all, the sound that Prego makes when he's falling, like screaming, and then we cut to him on the ground and his brains like splattered everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Which, and he's like, you killed my son. He's like, fuck that kid. Yeah, fuck that kid. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything to me. And he's like, it means something to me. Another thing I kept thinking as, as I was watching this film was that actor who played Prego was too old to be gangbang and he looked like someone's grandfather. Don Blakely. He's actually in Tarantino's Pulp Fiction as well. Um, I think the car chase scene is actually well done, which was uh, an homage to the French Connection, of course. And, you know, with Forster being a little McQueeny to me, the, the, the famous car chase scene in Bullet as well. I, th I think it's very well shot. Um, James Lemo was the cinematographer who notably shot a couple Abel Ferrara films, who Lustig very much reminds me of, yeah, and came from, you know, working in adult film before moving to narrative cinema. But Lemo shot Ms. 45, which is also very much part of this subgenre, and then Fear City with um, Billy D. Williams and Melanie Griffith um, and Tom Berenjar. All right, well, we could wrap it up. What would you give this film? And we didn't even talk about Richard Viterra wrote it, um, who wrote some of the adult films for Lustig before this, and also, strangely, an Agnieszka Holland film called The Third Miracle with Ed Harris and Ed Haish. Um, I would, I like this film. I think if you're a fan of Lustig, we reviewed Maniac, which Blue Underground also put on a 4K Ultra HD uh, several months ago. Um, definitely worth a watch. Uh, two disc sets ton, stocked with extra features that are worth taking a look. Uh, I give it three out of five and Blue Underground's presentation four out of five. I would give the film two and a half out of five. And the packaging? Four out of five. Oh, there you go. Bye. Bye.